Hello, Assalamualaikum guys and welcome back to another video. It's Supreme Muslim and today I'm back with another video on Hackintosh. So this video is on Clever Configurator series which I named as Clever Configurator Tutorials for Beginners. So in this video I will explain ACPI and this section is really a pain in the ass and I have been searching, I've been studying this from like three four days and i've wasted or you can say i have utilized more than 20 25 hours on this section and i have tried a different combination to get my sleep wake system working on the hackintosh but which i was unable to and all of that got a kind of a wasted but i got a quite a point of view in how to get the acpi running and how to optimize your hack and talk for better faster and more reliable use so in this video i will tell you how to optimize how to increase your speed and how to make your system more stable and less prone to restart reboots and random shit that happens to hackintosh most of the times so this is the second video in this series of videos on clever configurator if, if you have not watched this video just click on that white tab that is on top of your screen at the right side or you can also see the description for this video so let's begin with acpi in this video and basically acpi is advanced configuration and power interface so this is basically the main system and the main area in the bios which is given or which you can say under the operating system after the operating system starts so all of the power management is done by the operating system instead of the BIOS which used to be in the past so when you click the restart the system restarts even the hardware restarts if you click shutdown all of the hardware shuts down it's not like just the software shutdown and then you have to physically or mechanically unplug the wire to turn the, your system off so the shutdown you do from here is basically a soft shutdown not a hard shutdown hard shutdown is when you plug out the power cable from your system so that is controlled by acpi and when you plug in a usb the power that is supplied to the usb port is under the acpi and if you plug in a hdmi cable or any of the cable which takes power to work like usb hard drives or anything a camera mouse keyboard that is under acpi to provide power and to operate with the operating system then after that the second most important thing under the acpi is the power states of your cpu and whole of your system the most the first stage of power states in the acpi is g which is which stands for global states there are three global states and each global state have other s and c states so the g0 is when the computer is on and g1 have a subset of four power states which are named s1 to s4 and g1 is computer in sleep mode so this is the area in which high sera is troublesome and it's really hard to solve g1 and s1 computer is in sleep but s1 power on suspend that CPU is not using as much power as it used to be. It's on lower state, but it's not turned off. Then S2 state comes when CPU is turned off and your whole of the system is in sleep mode. But the rest of the hardware like RAMs and hard drives are still working. Hard drives are mostly turned off, but RAM is powered on. Then S3 is standby mode when your RAM is the last thing which is taking the power and everything else including monitor cpu and fans are turned off we have to get into the standby mode or the sleep mode to get the sleep and wake system working on our hackintoshes which isn't working on high sera and the s4 state is mostly unavailable in mac os x it's available in some of the macbooks but not on mac pro machines or iMac machines hibernation is when even the RAM is turned off and all of the data from the RAM is copied to the hard drive so to send the system in hibernation and when you turn on system takes a lot more time than waking up from a standby mode but it uses least power your all of the data is saved in a volatile non-volatile disk and then G2 states come where is the global state and in this is the state when your system is in soft shutdown mode so and then the 
G3 is the mechanical unpowered. So in G0, there are more CPU states. CPU states are basically the states in which a CPU is working at different standards or different level of performances. The main states of CPU are C0 to C4 and in C0 the CPU is working at its full and it's doing something useful. Then in C1 it's not executing anything but it's on that monitor display is on but the execution level is at minimum then c3 the cpu went to ideal and then c in ideal it also went to like executing nothing or it's like in a standby mode and then c4 the cpu is turned off or the voltage to the cpu is off in c0 states there are more states which are named as p states of the power states of the cpu so P0 is generally the highest powered state in which the CPU is working at the maximum voltage and at, an, and at the maximum frequency. So P0 stands for the maximum frequency and ma maximum performance of the CPU. And then increasing in the number means decreasing the performance. Then comes the P1 which means a CPU is working a little lower than the C0, then P2, 3 and it descends to PN states which is defined by the manufacturer of the CPU. Uh, Intel Haswell system or Haswell processor has up to 10 P states and C states. So that means it can work at 10 different levels of performance, saving the battery and optimizing the task. So once we have done with the history, now let's go to the Clever Configurator and understand what this ACPI things does for us. Starting here, the SSDT table, you can see some of the basic features you will see here are what I already told you. Generate P states, this stands for the Clover will generate the power states for your CPU. That's, that is very important. If you haven't taken that ticket, then generate C states and generate, then there is APS and APLF and plugin type. These are also some of the CPUs related stuff which you should enable and most of the time this does not cause any crashing or uh, error at booting but still just for safety you should back up your config and EFI files before applying anything because every system is different then here is C states which I already told you the CPU states CPU C0 de depending means the most performa performing state and then C2 means in ideal and C4 also mean that so you should enable all of this and it will affect depending on your CPU. The min multiplier and the max multiplier the min multiplier is the lowest frequency your CPU is desired to go. So if you're using an Intel, mostly the lowest frequency an Intel CPU goes to is 800. You can downclock that, but it's not required. So you should go for 8, and here you can end, enter your maximum frequency, or you should leave it. Normally, people uh, normally it's uh, better to leave the max states. Then P limit DICT is basically power limit or the maximum power performance state the CPU should go, and it should should be zero. For the maximum performance then i have doubled the first state so it means the double the first state at the start and it is an optional if you want to use it then use system input output information so if you click this it will use your motherboard system input output information in clever configurator instead of generating a random or a matching SSDT information for your system so I will prefer you use the system IO. Don't use drop original manufacturers tables because these are very important and if you are not using custom made DSDT or SSDT table you should not use this and these fixes will be applied if you don't use this so don't worry about that. Then here is the halt enabler so halt enabler is another important thing which is required for your sleep and I hope this fixes your sleep problem. So basically it is something which is in UEFI system and OSX system and it helps to sleep better. And then we go to fixes and I don't know where to start. This, there is so much things to explain. So fix USB is an also fix which you can apply if your USB isn't working properly. 
I have already taken a piece out of the Clover Wiki to explain you better. It's injected USB devices and their properties and it is highly recommended to use. It does not create care crash. It haven't on my system. Then fix shutdown is also one of the most important fixes you can use. For me, without DSTT and SSDT, my system was not properly going to shut down state. It used to restart and after using this, my system shut downs properly. So basically this is what it does. This trick may repair shutdown problems for some system. ASUS and Gigabyte, I'm using a Gigabyte and it helps. And then fix display is also important. I'm using it right now. It is helping to boot with Intel's graphics card. So it's really recommended to use. Then we come with here. Delete unused is basically you choose, you can delete all of the unused uh, areas of the SSDT tables. It might increase your booting time. And then there is an add PNLF. And I use this because I read that it will help my system to sleep and wake properly. And I don't know if it, this works for you, but you should try this as well. Then there is fix S3D. It also solves sleep and wake problem fixing the underscore S3D tables. And you should try this as well. If your Intel Pro graphic card is not working properly, your integrated graphics, then you can use this fix Intel graphics. And this is the new way to fix that. And after this, your X and patches here and here will be applied here will be applied on your system without this these fixes won't apply so it's really important if you're using those fixes and finding no result debug is also very useful it helps to uh, debug the system if your system is not booting properly then there is this sl sleep sli SLP SMI at wake so basically this also helps to solve some of the sleep and wake and shutdown issues on UFI motherboards and uh, I've been using this for a couple of the weeks and I don't find a big difference but this might help you out then there is suspend override so this is the only big thing which if I use my system went to sleep and never comes back without this my system went to sleep and comes back out after like 5 10 seconds but this suspend override stuff stops that so basically what it does is it patches the dst table and it changes the state from 5 to 3 and 4 to 5 sleep and suspend so as i already told you how much these states are important in your acpi then there are ipc power button so this fix is for if you are not getting the power button working on your system so basically you press the power button but the osx does not show any response to that so if you use this which is available right here and then your system will show this kind of a dialogue which if it is not showing without this fix then after this fix this will show so most of the system don't show this if the power button is pressed and i have just pressed the power button to show this to you and uh, what else we are left drop OEM many of the people say without this your fixes won't be applied that's a myth they do apply without this so it's nothing to worry or use and uh, firewire fixed wire if you're using a fixed wire wire then you can use this if your system has a wire firewire you can use this fixed fiber under 8000 which is available right here and what are we left with fix HDA I don't recommend this it never works but it crashes the system so leave this leave this away fix wake is also available here and it fixes the warning that sometimes come on when you boot your OS X that it was not shut down properly. 
then there is MCHC which is really required if you're using an 861 motherboard and this is available right here now there there is a patch APIC this patch is for the Skyline CPUs people who are using the yes the sixth generation of Intel CPUs they can use this patch APIC to fix their uh, known booting Hackintoshes and it is really useful for that the reuse triple tetra f is to increase the size of the bit from 8 to 16 bit for whole of your clover patch and i don't know which why who you would use this but this is one of the very important thing and then we have smart ups if you have a smart ups or your system is on a battery you can use this reset address and reset value is used if the fixed shutdown is not working and you can add 0x64 here and 0xf e here to fix your shutdown and restart problem and then you can also do disable aspm it's apple system power management and if you're using a null cpu power management or the apple system power management is crashing your x99 or x299 systems you can use this drop oem dsm are the tables you want to drop if you are not using some specific uh things here like wi-fi hda nvidia or amd you can drop those tables specifically not all of them you can just select these this this and if you want to drop all of them you can just select this so i won't recommend this but you can use any of this then there are patches for USB graphics card and audio here and even the SATAs for different problems related to that and I hope the video is already way too long to add it and to for you to grasp in the one video so I will try to make another video on this as well but I will proceed to the next sections and after I'm done with all of these sections I will make a video again of ACPI with updates and with more details I hope you are still there watching this video and I hope this video helped you out and I hope this video helped you understand ACPI boost states and double states and the power states and the G states and the C states and what enable C2, C4, C8, C6 and what generate P states mean and if this video helped you out in any ways please like share and subscribe this video and help me on patreon that matters a lot to me and like share and subscribe tell your friends and family to watch these videos as well and thanks again until the very next video please take care allah hafiz